So I hope you had a chance to try out the challenge. If you haven't tried out the challenge, here's a link to the video that I described the challenge. But in this video, I'm going to actually create the solution for the C sharp version. Well, let's go inside here, make sure we open the scene and select the challenge one script. The first thing that I'm going to do is get the enemy to move, which is the first two tests that I do. There's several ways you can do it, but I'm just going to show two of them. So we can say transform dot position and to this position, we can add the offset that we wanted to make. So I use a plus equals, meaning that is actually going to increment the transform position value. Now we can pass the offset that we want our object to move. Now the enemy, if I select it, you can see that the front position of the enemy is actually the X axis and that is the transform right. So we can say transform the right. That's going to be the front direction and multiply it by the speed. So we have the speed variable here. And the uh, one more thing that we need to make sure that we don't forget is multiply by time delta time so that our movement is going to be in per seconds, not per frame. So that is one approach you can do it. And uh, let me comment that out and show another one. So you can also use transform.translate. In here, we can pass the vector that we want to offset as well. The difference between using the position and translate, the translate is going to be offsetting the object based on the rotation of the player. So we use the transform right here, which is the rotation of the player to multiply the speed. In here, the translate is going to be doing that multiplication inside. So we don't have to multiply by transform right. Now, instead, we can use vector three and say that we want to get the vector three right and use that to multiply by speed and also by time delta time. So those both are valid options for what we're trying to do here. And we can actually go back here and test it out and see that it's actually working properly. With that code right there, you can see that our enemies are moving and we have passed the first two tests. If I run it with the other code, it's going to be exactly the same results. Now that we got our test one, test two sorted out, the next one is we need to make sure that the enemy is moving in the right direction. And that's the test three and four. So for getting the direction, uh, there's also different ways of doing it. You can calculate their rotation angle, but the simplest way to do that is using these transform dot right or dot up or dot left to rotate your player. You can pass the direction vector here and everything else can be done by unity. So let's do that transform dot right. That is our forward facing direction. And that will equal the difference between the two points of our interest. The first point is going to be the waypoint that we're currently moving towards. We can get that by looking at the array that we have here and retrieving the waypoint that we're currently moving towards. So let's do that waypoints. And in here we can say a waypoint index. We want to get the position of that waypoint. And from the, this position, we want to subtract our current position of our enemy. So let's say transform dot position. That will be our directional vector. Now this vector that we get is not going to be a magnitude of one, but when we set it to transform right, and if we use the transform right anywhere else, like we did here, when we retrieve it, it's going to be actually a magnitude of one. Unity converts that for us, so we don't have to do that. But if you want to make sure that this is a unit of one, then you want to normalize it and that's going to create a magnitude of one. But like I said, we don't have to do that because Unity is going to do it for us. So this will create that direction. And now if we run it, our bottom one should actually turn towards the first waypoint and move in that direction. And you can see that there you go. We have successfully moved to that waypoint and we have passed test three. Now test four is also a test for rotation, but it's going to be testing further along the path there we need to travel. 
Now you can see that the enemy is actually sticking to that waypoint that we're specifying and it's because it's constantly calculating and making sure that it's moving towards that point and that's why the enemy is changing direction but it's staying at that point. So the next thing that we need to do is travel through those waypoints. So for that we need to add to our code something that it's going to be checking if we have reached that point. And once we reach that point to actually go to the next one. So let's do that right here at the bottom. After we've moved, let's check if we have reached that point. To check that, we need to use the difference between the position. So let's actually create a vector three variable so that we won't subtract it twice. Well, let's call it difference put it here and now we can use the difference between the position for setting the direction and we can reuse it here when we're checking it but we actually are interested in magnitude so let's get magnitude and now we can check if we've reached a point now we need to set some kind of value which is going to define that we have reached that point now let's say if the distance is less than 0.1 then we reached that point if we have reached that point, we need to go to the next waypoint. And we are already using a waypoint index here. So all we have to do is just increment it. And that's going to let us go to the next waypoint. Now, if we think about the edge case of this process, when we reach the last point, we're actually going to increment the waypoint beyond the array size. And we're going to get an out of bound exception. So to prevent that, we need to actually make sure we do a check. And in here, let's check if our waypoint index is actually less than the amount of waypoints that we have. So we can say waypoints.length, and that's going to check that. And we can put all of the code that we have written inside this if statement. Now, since we're still in the code here, the last thing that we need to do is to destroy the enemies once it reached the last point. And we know that we have reached the last waypoint if this is actually false. So we can say else here and say destroy and pass our game object here. Save that. And this is actually the complete solution for this challenge. So let's run it and make sure that we get the 100% score. And it seems like we're passing all of the tests. The last two tests are successful as well. So there we go. That is one of the solutions that you could have for this challenge. Now, if someone had a more interesting solution to this, do post that in the comments. It's always nice to see what other people come up with for the solutions and you can actually learn by looking at other people's code. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to write that in the comment as well. I hope you enjoyed this challenge and I'll see you in the next one.